Cuthbert. Dennis Wyness. Vanessa Cali Thistle legend. Wyness not able to test McGregor much. Half time, not too many openings, although Kevin Thompson did force an Eastern save out of Mark Howard. Half time though at Love Street, it is St. Mirror nil, Rangers nil. Rangers hoping to regain top spot after Celtic just nudged them off it yesterday on goal difference. Papach for Weir. David Weir has been knocked by a minute. Dorman. Now Charlie Adam. No changes yet, but I suspect Rangers might make one soon if things don't look up for them. Brady. Spun away from Davis. Billy Mimmett. Davis takes it off his toes. Kenny Miller's going to be first to that. Broadfoot. Darcheville. Adam. Davis now for Papach, although he's sent it behind him. Adam. Pedro Mendes. Bouguera. Potter cleared it. That's a foul by Darshavid on Cuthbert. You can see the Rangers are trying to up the tempo with their passing. Pretty sure that was something that has been said in the dressing room. Because if you're playing against a team that are well organised and submit an R today, it's the only way you create space to get in behind them and stretch them. It's a quick movement of the ball. It's a poor return from Dorman. We are. Knocked back by Mason for Dorman. Here's Stephen Robb, confronted by Broadfoot. It's come up, Robb. Well, we've mainly seen Robb in this match today as someone that stops Broadfoot going down that right hand side. There's not been much forward play from the left sided Simmerin player. Pedro Mendes for Charlie Adam. Rangers looking to up the ante at the start of this second half. Bouguera. Darcheville. Broadfoot. Davis. Mendes. Darcheville. Up against Stephen Robb. And he's stuck to his task, but it is a corner for Rangers in front of their fans at that end. Again, it was neat and tidy, but it was congested. The Rangers have managed to get a corner out of it. Charlie Adam floated in, it's a good one. And Bouguera. Cuthbert. On by Ross. Mason. Dorman shoving Thompson. St Mirren, once they do get into possession, they don't keep it. Mason there, the ball's into him. He could take a touch. He has to try and keep possession for his side. Darcheville. Quickly on to Pedro Mendes, incisive this. But no takers for Rangers and 
Mason is able to scoop it away, although only to Papach. Darcheville. Broadfoot. Early cross. And it drops for Kenny Miller. And Mason and Potter were quickly upon him. It's a corner. Rangers eighth corner. Stephen Davis takes it. Cleared by Gary Mason. Kevin Thompson will return it. David Weir still in there. And Kirk Broadford. On a half volley against his old club. All attempts generally few and far between. Dorman. Wynas. Unable to link up with Mehmet. Pulled away by Papach. Broadfoot. Davis has gone for the return. Shadowed by Brady. Davis shrugged him off. Offside. Kurt Broadfoot flags up. Kurt Broadfoot made his debut for St. Mirren six years ago today. Dennis Wynas. Here's Ross. So Mirren thought that should have been a free kick as Wynas was grounded by Bouguera. And Rangers are breaking away with John Claude Darcheville showing some urgency. Awkward kick up in front of Howard, but he held it well. A concerted effort to get at the goal much quicker. Ross. His hamstring holding up OK for now. Wynas. Cuthbert. It's over the head of Billy Mimmett, straight through to the returning Alan McGregor. Broadfoot. Stephen Robb's centre, met by Pedro Mendes. Stephen Davis. Paul Crawford can't get to that, the only player to figure in every game for Rangers so far this season. Yeah, he has become a mainstay, but you can often see a poor pass from Pedro Mendes, but that probably sums up Rangers' afternoon so far. Papach. Gaining aware of uh, Darcheville. Mark Howard was hoping to come up against his pal today. He was with Neil Alexander at Cardiff, but uh, Walter Smith had other ideas and recalled McGregor. Walter Smith hasn't uh, named an unchanged team since January. He almost did today. Almost, apart from McGregor coming back. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he's thinking of changes right now. Davis. Bouguera has joined this attack, but it's Darshville. Oh, he's tried to catch out Howard. He did try to do that. <laughs> I think by his right grin afterwards, it was. And a hand signal there as well to Kenny Miller, yep. Almost got lucky. Thompson, who has stayed down. Typical of him to go in for a challenge like that. Here's Darcheville, Broadfoot. 
Potter beat Miller to it. Thompson is still uh, down, although not for long, I don't think. Papac. Lasted well wide. Crunching challenge. Peter Smith has come down to confer with Kenny McDowell and Ali McCoy, Sporters' first ever game as Rangers manager, was here at Love Street back in 1991. A 1-0 win that day, and the way it's going so far, he would uh, set up for something similar. And it doesn't look too clever for Thompson. I just think the referee should have had a, a better look at that one. You can see that Thompson was just going for the ball, and Brady, for me, a little bit too late on that one. Oh, Lafferty's going to come on. Yeah, that's a dangerous challenge. I think at least a yellow. So Thompson may miss out on the international front again. Kyle Lafferty. Recently returned from injury himself. In fact, he's had uh, a few problems with various parts of his body since his big money move from Burnley. Stephen Davis and Pedro Mendes just receiving their instructions from Lafferty. What looks like Charlie Adam just tucks in one. Mendes has gone up a little bit higher up the park. Dashville over on the right hand side, Lafferty on the left. Here is Dashville. Lafferty has to rescue it. Hapatch available. Here's Charlie Adam. Waste no time, but Potter clears it. Mehmet for Wyness and back. Dorman's going to join this attack. Although Baguera will rush across. Broadfoot. Certainly now, Dashville is hugging this sideline on the right-hand side. It's been effective for him. Dashville skipped past Haining, but uh, drilled it into the side netting. Just lacked a little bit of composure there, he was in. But Rangers certainly going for it now. Miller through the middle, Mendes in behind. Lafty left side, Dashville right. An hour played. With due respect to St Mirren, this is not the sort of uh, place that Rangers would have been expected to drop points. Celtic would be rather delighted if they do. Here's Broadfoot. Stephen Robb will get in front of Kurt Broadfoot. Assisted by Will Haney. Charlie Adam getting some grief from the St Mirren fans. He was uh, popular though here in his time on loan when St Mirren won promotion to the top flight. Not getting much thanks for it now from the home fans. Papac. Pedro Mendes. Papach and Lafferty both going for it, and Papach has stayed down. And Lafferty's continued a free kick. And just lost Kevin Thompson to injury. Papach took one here. Yeah, and both left sided. Just gets caught a little bit. It was more about two Rangers players getting in their own way. It certainly is a more attacking set up now from the visitors, They're really going for it. The kick given against Billy Mehmet, now in favour of David Weir.
Well, you can see their possession again in the second half. This time, all Rangers. St Mirren just can't keep the ball. Scooped away by Weir. Before Mehmet could get a look in. Mason leaves it for Brady. Bouguera confidently taking it away from Wynas. Sparking this Rangers attack. Mendes for Davis. And here is Dashville. No end product. A stumbling effort. Well, that's what gets you in. The quick passing. Look at the difference in the tempo of that attack. And Dashville continues his afternoon. Very disappointing. Jack Ross expected to miss this game with a hamstring problem, but returned to training towards the end of the week and made it. Wynas, Charlie Adams onto that, and now Kirk Broadfoot. Here is Dartaville. Oh, it's a cross for Miller. Nearly. It was Scott Cup, but who was with him? This could have gone anywhere, it's all about delivery. Fantastic ball in from Darcheville. We've seen a lot more of it out in that right-hand side. Charlie Allen then ready to send this in. The Rangers fans eager to see a goal. Charlie Allen then goes long this time. And it's going to be another corner. David Weir's effort, blocked by Potter. It's time for Chris Boyd, and Rangers want to bring him on now. Jean-Claude Darsville is going to go off. Chris Boyd on. And when you're looking for a goal, he's your man. Davis fools everyone by picking out Pedro Mendes. Would it be like he's a whole firm goal? Here's your answer. Chris Boyd scored that uh, sensational goal at parting in the Co-op Cup, but then found himself on the bench at Hibs. 75 goals in 114 games for Rangers. A phenomenal record. What Rangers could do with 76 coming soon. Here's Kenny Miller. Charlie Adam thought about the shot. Goes for it eventually. Well, I think he wanted to hit it first time and then cut inside on his weaker foot. It wasn't the best in the end, but good link-up play. Kenny Miller dropping deep. And just falls to his right foot, but it's his balance, all off. Haining's header. Lafferty will rise. With Ross on a free kick. Lafferty leading with his arm. Well, Rangers are really playing what looks like a 4 2 3 1. With Miller just to the right of Boyd. Mendes in behind. Lafferty on the left side. A system that was utilized, utilized of course, by Paul Aguen way back then. Stephen Robb. Well, taking on Broadfoot. Oh, he's got his cross in. Close. <laughs> St. Mirren stuck at the foot of the SPL. The next two games after the international break are away from home at Hamilton and Dundee United. Stephen Davis. He'll be off to play for Northern Ireland. Wynas won that, but it's Pedro Mendes who's first to it, and now Papach. 
Lafferty let it go. Potter cleared it, but only as far as Mendes and Andy Dorman had to zip in. Broadfoot looking for Davis. Charlie Adam. Kenny Miller. Adam. Good hopeful from there for Charlie Adam. It is quite evident now that St Mirren are dropping very deep and that Wyness is no longer in contact with Mema up there. Stephen Robb now for Wyness. Here is Brady. Mehmet and Mason. Wyness, Mason. Billy Mehmet. Crawford made the challenge. Stephen Robb's centre. Might give up hey! McGregor. No, it won't give him any concern whatsoever. We're into the last 20 minutes. And it's still goalless. Motherwell 2 1 up on Falkirk in the first half at Fir Park. Can we have some goals, please? Davis. Sold Miller short. Bergera stopped it reaching Mason. Center and throw. St. Mirren, as longer it goes on, will fancy taking something from this game. And anything the likes of St. Mirren can take off the old firm is a bonus, really. Looks like St. Mirren are going to make a double change with Stephen McGinn and Craig Dargo coming on. We're for Boyd. Up against Cuthbert. <laughs> I think Lafferty uh, gave Boyd a little kick then, didn't he? Dennis Wyness is going off, and Craig Dargo is coming on. Missed the last couple of games with an injury. He scored for the reserves in midweek, and Andy Dorman is going to be replaced. He hasn't quite looked as effective as he was last season, Dorman. And Dargo is going to be joined by another new arrival, Stephen McGinn. St Mirren freshening up. Bouguera, Boyd, or oh, Kenny Miller almost, Potter in his way. It's a free kick, I believe, in that David Weir, furious with Willie Collins caught, and he's going to be summoned to the ref. Well, David Weir has had, I would say, a difficult-ish afternoon against Mehmet, certainly in the air. Mehmet has won his, well, more than won his fair share. Will Haining then to take this free kick. Aim towards Mehmet. Brady. Rob. Pedro Mendes, will it open up here for Rangers? Carl Lafferty. Here is Miller. A deep roll, but not for long. It's going to bounce towards Broadfoot. Davis. No way 
through. Targo jostling with Charlie Adam, and Adam wrestles it back for Rangers. Miller now for Broadfoot. Boyd! Straight at Howard. That's a good ball in from Broadfoot. Boy, you can't get the power, can't get it down. Mehmet giving Weir a torrid time again. Cuthbert. Baguera screening Dargo. Again, won that back off Miller. Dargo, the other sub. Brady. Over towards Mehmet, up against Papach this time. Oh, Weir with a poor clearance. And Papach bailed him out. No foul. The Samir fans rather baffled. Here's Kenny Miller, now Kirk Broadfoot, into the last quarter of an hour at Love Street. Keeper's ball, surely. Next Saturday from 7.30 on Satana Sports 1, we've got Slovenia, Northern Ireland for you, World Cup qualifier. And in Scotland's group, highlights of Holland against Iceland, Saturday from 11 on Satana Sports 2. And on Wednesday week, England, who've made a terrific start, go to Belarus, and you can see that on Satanta Sports 1. Dargo hasn't really got his St Mirren career going yet, injured for a lot of last season. Ross up to Mehmet. And Rangers could be in bother here. It's in! Stephen McGinn with a wonder goal to give St Mirren a sensational lead over Rangers. A tale of the unexpected at Love Street. Well, it's a completely inspired substitution from the manager. And what a finish. Again, it's Mehmet causing all sorts of problems. Davy Weir is well off him, it's a great header back, and McGinn's got so much to do. And McGregor, I think he gets his position a bit wrong here. He's too far across to the left, and he's actually asking McGinn, go on, put it in that corner. Well, look, I'll just go and do that. What a strike. First shot on target. First goal of the afternoon. Well, there was almost a slight delay when that went in. <laughs> Everyone had to double-check that it really happened. Stephen McGinn has scored four times for St Mirren, twice against Celtic, once against Rangers now. He's got it in for the old firm, the grandson of the former Celtic chairman, Jack. Well, it's the one thing that hasn't been happening for St Mirren in the second half. A ball up to Mehmet and a bit of support from the midfield. For the first time they get it, St Mirren's first shot on target and what a finish. Well, if Rangers were to lose here, a uh, three-point advantage over Celtic would be wiped out. And Celtic would stay top on goal difference. A late challenge on Papach. And it's brought a yellow card for the goal scorer. Yeah, that's a bad one. Followed right through there. Now it's about concentration, digging in, being organised for St Mirren and not going too deep. We've seen it so many times against the old firm. Charlie Adam drills it across, Bouguera. And Weir didn't connect. It's 17 years since St Mirren beat Rangers. Well, let's face it, Davy Weir is not the player you want on the end of that one. 
It's 22 years since St Mirren beat them at home. This will be a mighty scalp if St Mirren can see it out with the next 11 minutes will probably feel like a good half hour at least to them. Well, they were stretched there for the goal. Probably stretched because they are playing, it's more or less with three, up behind Chris Boyd. And the two sitting midfield players got caught forward. And that left the back four exposed. But McGinn had so much to do that he took full advantage. Again, a young man who has a habit of scoring against Celtic. Bangs one in against Rangers too. Pedro Mendes, Broadfoot. Let's come back to Broadfoot. Charlie Adam, holding off McGinn. And the flag is up for offside against Chris Boyd. You can see he does just stray a yard. I think it must be frustrating for Chris Boyd. Rangers started with two up front, Darshville and Miller. And then when he comes on, they go to one. With a three in behind. I think he'd quite enjoy a partnership up there. Well, a win for St Mirren would lift them off the bottom, above Aberdeen, and possibly later above whoever loses at Fir Park as well. Another World 2-1 up on Falkirk in the first half there. Here's McGinn. Ross kept it in, but only presented it to Papach. Again, intercepting. Mason that time, in the way. Well, Jack Ross must have hamstrings of steel, <laughs> because he is still chasing down every ball, and looking sharp. Adam. Boyd. Now take us for the knockdown. Brady needs some help and gets it from Haining. To Guerra. Sent back in Bugera's direction by Haining. And again. Davis. Bugera chasing this. Sending off Stephen Rock. And it's broken to Dargo. Gary Mason to his left. Rangers having to trudge back. Mason has got absolutely no support whatsoever. And the free kick is going to go against it. the last time St Mirren beat Rangers it was 1-0 then at Ibrox Davis off target we haven't been able to stretch St Mirren it's been too organised for them and I think in the three players at the back for the home side they've been absolutely tremendous first had to cope with Miller and Darshville now Boyd and they're managing it Yellow car coming Gary Brady's way for holding back Pedro Mendes. Yeah, it's just anything now to stop Rangers. Brady with the yellow. They just need someone to bail them out of big bother. Charlie Adam in towards Weir. Punched away by Howard. Davis. by Brady.
Broadfoot's throw. Weir's flick. Comes to Charlie Adam, who pops it back. Boyd. Adam. Shane Merrin have just got to keep doing that, getting bodies in the way. And Cuthbert and Adam almost squared up then. Here is Bouguera. He's gone past Brady. But it's cleared by Haining. Davis's cross on by Miller. Chris Boyd missed it. Second time around, it's gone away from goal. And Rangers are running out of time. We're in the last five minutes. And this wasn't part of the plan. They're 1-0 down to St. Mirren. Well, it's been a game of frustration for Rangers. But I think they've brought a lot of that on themselves. They haven't moved the ball quick enough. They haven't used the wide areas, which you have to do if you're playing against the back three. In saying that, you've got to give a lot of credit to St Mirren. They rejiggled their setup from a 4-4-2 to a 3-5-2, and it's really worked for them. So, hats off to Gus McPherson. But you just never know. There's still five minutes of this game to be played. St Mirren making a final change. Gary Brady's going to be replaced by the long-serving Hugh Murray who joins St Mirren as a 16-year-old, now 29. <laughs> Not even he was here the last time St Mirren beat Rangers. They are on the verge of a victory that will be talked about and remembered for a very long time. But they have to stay focused and concentrated because Rangers will be giving it there all now in the search for an equaliser. Never much margin for error when you're going for the title in Scotland alongside your fierce rivals. There's not, but Rangers just have to get the ball in the box now. See if Chris Boyd or Lafferty can get a flick down and somebody follow up. Broadford. Davis. Charlie Adam. Papach. He has got it in the box. Chris Boyd! Off the post from Boyd. And is that a sign that it will be St Mirren's day? Rangers hope not. Watch well, twice now since he's come on. He's managed to get a header on target as well. But just not inside that post. McPherson pondered for most of the week whether to go with three at the back today. And he was still pondering this morning, I think. It could be about to pay off big time if they can see it out. Haining challenges. Boyd left on the ground. We have to get up quick, though, because it may well be coming back in his general direction. Weir. Made it straight to Mason. Bouguera intervening before Billy Mehmet could race away. Two minutes of normal time to go. Rangers in the unusual position this season of needing a good few minutes added on. Bouguera. Davis. It's a corner. So he kind of got to it first. Potter was with him. I'm pretty sure Gus McPherson was thinking more ahead to next week, a massive game for them away to Hamilton, but if you can get three points here today, what a bonus that would be. Charlie Adams' corner, and Lafferty off the line by Rob, brought for a charging in, it's Miller, handball shout from Rangers in the thick of that, big handball shouts, a cracking goal by a scramble, and Rangers still plug away. Oh, a terrible touch from Lafferty. Just bodies piling up everywhere. It's Cuthbert that does get in front of it. Very difficult to tell, though, if it's a handball. In the last minute of the 90. 
Rangers need is urgent, it is desperate. Davis. Who's that going to drop for? Nobody in a Rangers shirt. And the word from the touchline is there's going to be three minutes of stoppage time. And that's confirmed. Three minutes for Rangers to save the day. St Mirren so close to a monumental victory.